up, America? Neil here from Jungle Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. I am super excited today because I'm going to be redoing my most popular video. It's got over six figures in views already. It's uh, concealed carry positions, where, why, and how. Uh, the difference with this video is that I'm going to do everything live fire. So you're actually going to see how this all works live. So I'm very excited. Hope you are. Let's get started. As far as uh, the positions go, we're going to look at this just like a clock. So the front here, we're at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6, and 9. Okay, pretty basic there. The first position I'm going to talk about is appendix carry. Appendix carry is where the holster is going to be right up here, or some people even like to do uh, kind of a cross draw appendix. Okay. I will tell you this, there's national trainers out there that, that uh, really love appendix carry. Personally, in my opinion, I don't like appendix carry. If that's how you carry and you carry every day and you like it, fantastic, do it. Uh, for me, one, that uh, when I carry appendix, if I'm sitting, it's uh, pointing right at my body, which I'm not a fan of. You can still do it safely with training. I just don't prefer that. But most importantly, it's super, super uncomfortable for me. I carry a larger full-size gun, four-inch barrel, and that thing sticks right in my groin when I sit down, so I'm just not a fan of it. Well, that doesn't mean it's not good. Whatever gets you to carry every day, that's what we want. Now, the next thing we <coughs> we're going to look at is the 3 o'clock position, where you would see uh, most law enforcement or people who are going to be wearing it in more of a security type position, uh, where they're outside the waistband, and um, it keeps everything out here clear. Obviously not good for concealed carry, typically because you have a bulky gun on your side. Now, once we go around here, you have where I'm carrying right now, which is what we consider the 4 or 430 position, okay? This is what I prefer, mainly because I carry a larger gun. Um, and two, I just find it very comfortable. And I can do all the things I'm going to show you from the ground, from seated, whatever the case is. I can access that weapon very quickly, and it keeps the gun very comfortable. I'm going to touch on the types of holsters uh, based on where you're going to carry, because uh, an appendix holster can be a little different than, say, a holster that you're going to carry at the 4 and 4.30. So we're going to cover all that in just a minute. There is a couple positions that I, I would highly discourage you from, and I'm going to give you the reasons why. The first one is what we call small of the back, okay? So if I remove my firearm here, small of the back obviously is what it sounds like, right in the small of your back. So the gun would fit right back here, okay? Now clearly, uh, we always want to have a holster for safety reasons. want to keep that trigger guard clear. Obviously, that firearm's been cleared, and I just want to demonstrate where it is. But let me tell you why. And to be honest with you, it's actually pretty comfortable back here and super easy to conceal. But let me tell you why I don't like this position, okay? First of all, I do a lot of training, uh, a lot of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. And I can tell you firsthand that trying to access this gun, and I'm going to show you in just a minute uh, what I'm talking about, is going to be nearly impossible. But I want you to think about this. If you are in a violent encounter... It's not going to be a scenario where you're going to be gently lowered to the ground. There's a good possibility you're going to get shoved down. So think about this. Do you really want to get forced down to the ground with this piece of steel right in your spine? I certainly don't. But now let's look at this from the perspective of actually accessing the weapon should we be in that situation. I'm on my back now and the assailant has pushed me down, shoved me down, pulled me down from behind, whatever the case is, and now I'm on the ground. All right, so here we are, worst case scenario, someone's trailed me, they're on top of me. They're going to do some type of serious bodily harm, stab me, punch me, whatever the case is. The realistic option here that I'm going to get underneath, now let's look down, not just to my side, but I'm trying to get underneath. i got to get under my back, get this gun out, while I have someone bigger and heavier on top of me. Uh, to try to access this is really a terrible idea. Do we have techniques to help with that? Sure we do, but why would I want to do that? If I go to even my 4 o'clock position, it's far more accessible to be able to access that gun, even if I have to move and sit up, which I would want to do anyway uh, for distance management. But I've been able to access that much, uh, much better. In any way, this is going to be a bad scenario, but I want as many advantages as I can gain. Now you see this at a different angle without somebody on top of me, but obviously you can imagine somebody's here. Once again, I have to get my, my, my pelvis up, my lower body. I have to get under here, again, while someone's trying to do harm to me. Very, very difficult. Uh, even if I sit up, I can still access my four, but getting back here is really difficult, again, with somebody on top of me. So that's why I'm not a fan of small of the back. Real quick, the, the one that I'm totally, I would actually rather you, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'd rather you not carry a gun at all than carry off body. Off body simply means it's in some type of bag, purse, merce, satchel, whatever you want to call it. So think about this. The whole purpose of a holster is to keep this gun oriented and aligned and attached to you so that every time you need to get to it, you can do so. 
But in real life, again, you are not going to get attacked from 25 yards. It's going to be up close and personal. So now that I have this bag, right, where I have a gun in, you seriously think that with someone in my personal space, I'm going to get this bag, open it up, try to get this gun out while somebody's here? I mean, are you kidding me? The other thing is, even if the bag is a tactical bag and it has a holster in there where the gun is uh, solid, the bag is not solid. It's moving around, right? So we got to get this bag around, get it out. Not going to happen. Plus, if we don't have a tactical holster, we just have this uh, in a holster of some sort, and then we put it in a bag. Now the gun can be oriented in any any orientation, it pointed in any direction. We got to try to find it. So that's ridiculous. The biggest thing is this is actually a, a big danger. Because if, if someone's going to take your purse or your bag or whatever, who cares? It's not worth your life. Give it to them and move on. But of course, this time, you got to think about it from a criminal's perspective. They're going to rip that open, try to get your prescription drugs or your money or whatever the case is and take off. Well, what happens now? They open it up and they find a gun, right? Not a good scenario. Uh, best case you can wish for that case is that you just armed a criminal. Worst case is they now have a gun. So... I don't really want to find out where that happens, uh, what happens next, right? And then, of course, you're also more inclined to do something stupid like fight somebody over it uh, and get really hurt because you know there's a gun there, okay? So I'm totally against off-body carry, and I want you to understand why. Now we're going to look at types of holsters. Obviously, these are completely different types of holsters. They do a similar function, uh, but these are designed primarily for comfort in different positions. So first and foremost, this is your typical appendix-type holster. It's a very minimal holster. It has a single clip. What I'll tell you about these clips, I'm not a fan of any clips on a holster. I would much prefer loops because these clips can come undone, but uh, usually on appendix holsters, this is typically what you're going to find. So the way this is going to work, this is going to go inside uh, where my appendix carry position would be. Clips under my belt like that, okay? And then I would, of course, have my firearm right into the holster. And that's uh, pretty much where I would carry that appendix and pull my shirt over. Then we have the hybrid or the pancake style holsters where you have uh, two two loop, two clips and they're spaced apart and again this is more for my mode of carry back here at the four o'clock position uh, because it's a bulkier holster as far as overall length but it's designed to kind of contour to the body and dispense the weight with these two uh, clips. Important thing about the standard type of uh, clips that you're going to find where this actually the belt goes through here and these are actually pretty decent because they got a little a little uh, ledge there uh, these clips are garbage. At the end of the day, I don't care who makes them. Eventually, these are going to come out. I always replace every holster with these loops, whether they're a, diff a strap with a, a polymer type or this is leather. I don't really care, but I like a type that goes all the way around the belt and snaps shut so that you don't end up pulling the whole rig out um, when you pull your gun out. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, put one of these on. If you haven't seen this done before, I'm going to keep my shirt tucked in just so you can see how this is uh, going together here. I also skip a loop, so you'll decide for you what works best for you. But we're going to undo these snaps real quick. This will go inside your pants. Okay. The loops go on the outside, and then they snap shut from the bottom up. Okay. Just like so. Once we have that position where we want it, go ahead and cinch your pants back up. Now, key thing, this has got to be tight. I'd rather you, if, you have, if you're not using a nylon holster and you, want, you have a leather holster with holes, I'd rather you go to where it's tighter than looser, okay? It might be a little uncomfortable, but it'd be much more comfortable overall in carrying. Once I have that, i got the hard outer shell, so I don't need two hands to put it in there. Okay, I'm going to look in my holster, and there we go. Nice and tight, S sticks nice and tight to my body, pull my shirt over, we're good to go. Super important point here. You want to make sure you get a quality gun belt, a gun belt. They don't sell it at Walmart or Nordstrom's or Macy's or wherever, okay? Uh, they sell them when they sell holsters, so gun belt, super important. Now, here I am in my normal rig. I'm going to do my little 360 here, okay, hands down. If, if there at some point there's a little bit that sticks out when I move or something, I don't really care. I'm, uh, printing, everyone is all worried about printing, printing, printing. Let me tell you, uh, the little bulge in there could be a cell phone, it could be anything. And if anybody ever approached me and ever asked me, no joke, I would tell them straight up, it's a colostomy bag, mind your own business. So we're going to do this from a seated position. Uh, I can tell you right now, being in this, this little crappy lawn chair, it is way tighter than any car I've been in, too, unless maybe you drive a smart car. Uh, so this is very confined, but maybe I'm in an office chair. I don't know what the case is. But the point is, 
shooting from the seated position. Let's see what this looks like. As I do with every uh, single draw when I'm coming from concealment, always a shooting hand first. I learned that the hard way from an instructor uh, 10 years ago. Uh, I used to do the old with my reactive hand and pull out, and they grabbed my hand and they said, go, go. And I was like, ah. Oh. So you'll eventually learn that uh, using this to clear your garment is a far better way to go. Because if you do this normally and you got two hands, great. If you don't, you get used to pulling it. So if this one is gone, you, you still have your, uh, your, your, your firing hand. But anyway, so we're seated position. Same thing applies. I'm going to come up. Whether if I'm in a car and I can pull up with the steering wheel, that's great. Or I'm going to sit forward, whatever the case is. Take my, my uh, hands at the same time they're moving together. I draw up, pull my gun out. From this position, we're going to do from the ground here. Again, just like uh, someone pushed me down, whatever the case is, or I fell down. Uh, can I draw my gun up and shoot? And we'll talk about a little variations that we can do from the ground. Okay, so again, draw up, pull my gun up. Key thing here, I want to clear my legs. So I keep my legs down and I sit up. Okay. Now, I can also, from this position, I can get a very stable base, locking my elbow to the ground and using this for a very accurate shot. Okay. If I need to sweep, super important, live fire, guys, I don't want to cross my limbs. So I can still shoot if I have to, but as I come over to this side, obviously I'm shifting my legs. Okay, I prefer to just come up. That way I can cover whatever I need to cover and I don't have to worry about my limb. The uh, techniques that we use in jiu-jitsu that I apply for this, I want to keep my, my muzzle forward because I may have more threats coming, whatever the case is, and obviously I want to get off the ground. So uh, what I'm going to do is what we call standing in base. I'm going to use my left hand here to plant on the ground. As I keep my firearm, I still have a sight picture. i got the whole nine yards. I'm going to bring this leg behind my arm. Okay? The whole time, i am still got my muzzle forward and I'm getting up. If you notice, if you would have built a wall right in front of me, I could have still gotten up because I'm not going forward. I'm coming up and rising to straight on to my threat. Whatever you guys decide to do as far as appendix, three o'clock, four o'clock, whatever the case is, please guys, when you pick a position, stay consistent. Do it over and over and over. If you want to carry backup guns and whatever the case is, by all means, do whatever you like. But your primary weapon has always got to be in its location, the same location each and every time. So when things go south, you just react. I always say uh, 500 times of repetitions of something before it becomes almost like second nature. You don't have to think about these things. So again, if you're going to carry back here, stay consistent. Here's another quick tip. These, uh, you can buy these shirts anywhere. This is by Wrangler, but these are super lightweight. They actually are, I'd rather wear this on a hot day than a t-shirt. Um, but they're just a short sleeve button down shirt. They cover everything extremely well. They drape really well, real breezy so they don't print. Uh, even if you carry outside the waistband, like I do for sometimes for security type stuff, um, you can actually carry the entire gun completely concealed and nobody knows about it. And it's super, super comfortable. Keeps you cool. Remember, the reason we do consistency is because anything can happen anytime. And you want to be ready.